about like so many decades ago a village experienced a severe earthquake and everybody in the village town were like really alarmed and uh, terrified among that village there's a one old grandma was so joyful rejoicing everybody were concerned about what's wrong with her why she is so joyful why everybody is screaming and terrified about this you know earthquake you know you know one of the old women said mother why are you not afraid of this and the grandma said i rejoice to know that i have a god who can shake the world okay and a joy in god is contagious it does not matter the situation the circumstances the troubles uh, fears that you go through if you know that you have a god you already have god in your life your joy is definitely contagious nobody can contain it you your joy is continuous and you will enjoy and this morning i choose to speak on joy in the church amen you want to be joyful in the church and i want to tell you we christians should be the joyous of people on this entire world we should not be grumpy people by the way <laughs> right some sometime what is happening in the church we are the holy the world is sinning and we try to judge we try to be mourning rather we should be the one rejoicing because we are god saved already you have this precious experience and you can share this experience with others say to your neighbor you come to church to be joyful amen you become christian to be joyful amen your joy in christ is contagious because you are going to heaven one day you already have heaven in your life through jesus christ every day what more we need amen what more we need in this world we are joyful christians want to smile a little bit <laughs> i'm not a serious speaker this morning okay i i want people to enjoy and joyful you don't need to go for a comedy show somewhere in the town you can come here for sundays <laughs> cuz god is funny by the way <laughs> god is hilarious sometimes right god was i i want you to watch this uh, uh, real uh, now the chosen the movie chosen was released all about jesus and this director brings jesus amazing i love it because jesus was funny even before encountering this high priest and he was makes fun and jokes and just leaves <laughs> i think that's so beautiful and they brought a very practical way of showing jesus how jesus was too cool even to face the biggest trials they just walks away and then everybody and the, and the you know the uh, disciples laugh and this all the and the elders of the church like looking at what is wrong with them <laughs> Anyway, God wants you to be joyful. I want you to turn your Bibles today to Romans chapter 14 verse 17. 14 verse 17. The Bible says, "For the kingdom of God is not a matter of eating and drinking, but of righteousness and peace and joy in the Holy Spirit." Can you say with me, "Joy in the Holy Spirit"? the holy spirit is also not too serious he is also bringing joy into the hearts of god's children god wants you to be joyful the, the kingdom of god is not just eating or not just drinking but about righteousness about peace and about being joyful in the holy spirit the holy spirit brings such joy to all of us If you keep smiling I tell you you'll make all disease run away from your body. Do you know that? Yeah, 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 kid, a little baby who was born baby, a maybe growing baby can smile almost almost 160 times a day. How many times? 160 times a day. But the grown up adults we don't even smile or laugh 20 times a day. That's a problem. the kid is always running everywhere right i have two kids their room is disaster all the time <laughs> they are joyful right 
they forget about anything they have no uh, they have no concern about anything right food clothing nothing they are just free because they know mom and dad will take care of me they have such confidence and they are joyful they are funny similarly we really know that our father in heaven will take care of us we will not be tying ourselves too tight we will not be compressing our own self or locking in the doors of mourning and 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 fear and and we cannot take the leap of faith to move forward so this morning god is actually here to help us all of us because biblical joy is more than feeling happy it is lasting emotion that come from the choice to trust god that god will fulfill his promise for you amen are you trusting god for something god will definitely make sure that the promise that god has given to you will be fulfilled cuz he is trustworthy it is lasting emotion totally reliant on god depending on god for every single aspect of our life every single aspect because he is the source he brings everything what we need he will bring everything what we need day to day god wants you to be joyful christian say amen you don't need to be sad to see say to your neighbor don't be sad to see you know sad to see the 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 one group of religion while jesus time they were given this name because they are sad people sad to see means sad people because they do not believe life after death they do not believe in resurrection therefore they were named sad to see because they are not pharisees pharisees believe right uh, life after death resurrection so we don't need to be a sad christian say amen i hope you are with me come on you are not going to lose anything by smiling and laughing right rather you're going to make your brain work good your nerves work good right your emotions work good your mind refreshed right this morning we need to remove the rag of sorrow rag of disappointment take them off put the garment of praise amen garment of joy garment of peace garment of righteousness because the bible is so clear the kingdom of god is not a matter of eating and drinking but a righteousness and peace and joy in the holy spirit if you don't find joy anywhere you can find joy right in your heart through the holy spirit amen, amen. don't depend on somebody else to make you joyful you are already have joy in the lord amen we are not living our lives looking around but we are living our life looking at god looking within what he has done i hope that makes some sense right right we are not going to look at the circumstances situations around us but we are looking unto god looking within what he has done all right the holy spirit resides in you right there amen right here therefore your joy is contagious nobody can contain nobody can stop it no situation can stop it god wants you to be a joyful christian in this context it's a very important context roman chapter 14 because this is written to the church folks that's what i named my sermon as joy in the church sometime we christians will become more uh, how to say that uh, rigid in many ways we make rules and regulations so much it is happening right in this passage because in this passage in the church people are fighting with each other because somebody is eating meat somebody is eating just veggies <laughs> right it is a problem between vegetarianism and uh, what is that other called come and help me with some english pescatarian huh pescatarian whatever terian okay <laughs> you know so somebody eats meat somebody eats just vegetable like broccoli right beans somebody is eating steaks all the time right <laughs> yeah chelsea <laughs> this is the problem right in the church now they are fighting each other who's holy right who's worthy who's better than in themselves the problem in the church is who's better 
who's a better Christian. I want to tell you on your face, you are all better Christians in Christ Jesus. Praise God. Say to your neighbor, we are all better Christians. As long as you are in Christ, you are already better. Amen. <laughs> you are already good. You are good enough. Amen. <laughs> You are, you are saved enough. Say it to the, your neighbor. You are saved enough. Because this is happens. This is the fight of uh, who is more holier than. Who is more righteous than. No it is not. The Bible says you should not do that in the church context. Because you already know the Lord. Here the problem. The, there are a couple problems. I am going to talk about four steps. Then I will wind up the sermon today. First one is in that context. People are judging each other, judging each other on the, the matters of, not God, matters of habits, matters of eating, matters of drinking. The Bible is so clear, the kingdom of God is not a matter of drinking or eating. So here the problem, they make it, the eating is important, the drinking is important, but you eat this food, not that food. That big problem. That rightly happened with the Peter. Peter, God rebuked him on his face. Right? When he was praying on the upper room, all of a sudden, God sends Cornelius home. Right? Cornelius had an encounter with God. Cornelius sending his soldiers, hey, go, go, bring Peter because God wants to talk to me through him. When the Peter was praying, all of a sudden, the huge blanket comes down. In that vision, he sees all the holy animals, the filthy animals like a pig and porks, right? You like all of that. <laughs> Piggies appeared. He was so mesmerized. Lord, we are Jews. We cannot eat what? Pork. This is unholy, God. And God's voice comes up. I have made that holy. You don't say it unholy. <laughs> Whatever I have made it into holy. God was bringing that context that gospel is not just for the Jews. Gospel is for everybody. It's for the Gentiles. It's for the Romans. It's for the Indians. It's for the Africans. It's for the Americans. Right? God says the gospel is for everybody. God has made all food holy and choose whatever you would like to eat. Simple. Period. Right? Eat whatever you would like to eat. Don't tell me eat this and eat that. And then you feel that you are better than somebody else in the church. That divides the spirit of unity. That divides the hearts of, heart of God right in the church. People are divided over a drink, over a food. So the first lesson for all of us is that do not judge one another in the church. Can you turn to your neighbor? I know it's a little awkward, but I love talking church. Amen. <laughs> I want my people talking with me while I'm preaching. Tell, tell them, I will not judge you. It's better, oh, if you are seated with the spouse, that's a really good context. <laughs> I will not judge you. Praise God. We are not here to judge one another. We are not here to judge one another. In return, we are here to start loving, helping one another. Amen. We are here to start loving. We are here to love one another and help one another in the walk with the Lord. Amen? Not judging. This judgment belongs to God. Amen? If God needs to judge, we will not be sitting here, right here, right in this place. If God needs to judge the whole world, the world would have been consumed a long time ago, right? God has been merciful. God has been so merciful. He is loving. He is choosing mercy over judgment. Amen. Mercy every day. Mercy every day. Mercy to you. Mercy to you this morning. And second step in this uh, passage of Romans chapter 14 is, don't let small things in life divide your heart. Do not let that small thing, right, divide your heart. This applies in every context. It could be in marriage, right? Some marriage were stopped by the choice of food, right? The husband wants this, the wife wants the other one, right? The bride. They were divided. Somebody did not get married, right? Somebody fighting over the colors in the marriage arrangement, right? What color dress you wear, right? What color flowers we have? 
over colors, there was some dispute in the marriages, right? We see that. They didn't understand that the, the marriages, wedding is more than the colors of the marriage, right? Whatever that is. So it, it applies in every context of life. Think about any context you put in yourself. Don't let small things in life divide your heart. Small, small things, right? Is there any couples fight over going to a restaurant? <laughs> the husband wants to go to some place, the wife wants to go to the other place, right? Do we fight over all of that? You need to be very careful because just let it go sometime. Say to yourself, let it go, let it go. Don't, don't make a tiny, small thing a big issue, right? Big issue. You know, that is what exactly happened in the ministry of Jesus. The disciples were hungry. They were walking by the fields. They were so hungry that it was a day of a Sabbath. And this disciple, Jesus was walking with them. He created the whole world, right? He's walking with them. They grabbed some kind of, you know, uh, crops and, and the seeds from the, the wheat. They would start eating, chewing. They were hungry. Okay, they were walking miles together to some places. All of a sudden, some Pharisees, uh, some, uh, uh, scribes followed Jesus and telling how in the world, today is a Sabbath, your disciples are eating food from the field. Very small, tiny thing. They made a big issue, right? It's an abomination, right? Jesus is a park right. That's what they said. He's possessed by Beelzebul, the demons. And Jesus did not even care about you just walking, right? <laughs> yeah, that's, that's exactly. See, there's people, there are some people with a small mind will pick fight over small things. So I think, I know, I believe that all of us have a big mind. Amen? Praise God for that. Hallelujah. Okay, this is happening in the church right now. You know, in, in Roman church, church of Rome, they're letting small things to divide over food, over drink, over clothing, over how they look. You know, even the Corinthian church have a problem. Somebody, the woman is not covering the head, right? That's a tradition. And that church actually divided in pieces. Every woman who comes cover the heads, right? Can you see that? Traditionally, the churches were like, they were not focusing more on Jesus, more on the gospel, but they're focusing more on the small steps, about dress, about pants, right? <laughs> about colors. It's a problem. That's why I wanted to tell you this morning, do not let small things in life divide your heart. Little, little things, give them up. Move forward. If it is most important, engage, amen? If it is important for the kingdom of God, engage. If it is important for your marriage, engage. Do not let the small things to trouble and divide your heart. Small things actually blow the whole world. It happens. Small, small, tiny, tiny things can blow the whole world. You can see that. You can see that. The kingdoms are destroyed because of the small things. We got to be very careful. Fourthly, as I mentioned, Choose God in every matter of your life. Let the Holy Spirit fill you with joy. Amen? That's the, 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 the final point of my message. Choose God in every matter of your life. Don't keep Jesus as a side dish. He is the main course. Right? Do you go to, I, I know you'll be like french fries, that's good. Right? If you eat french fries all the time, what happens? You end up in hospital, right? 100%. Now you get diabetes, so easy. <laughs> Just kidding. <laughs> I mean, like, do not treat Jesus like a shy dish. Jesus is a main course of life. Therefore, choose God in every matter of your life. Every matter. Every matter. Small, big, huge, massive. Involve him. Consult with him. And allow the Holy Spirit to fill you with the joy. Very practical. Tell God, God fill me with joy and I will choose you over every aspect of my life. Everything, everything, right? 
small or big. Whatever concerns you, concerns God. I want to tell you, whatever concerns you, concerns God. God wants to help you. God wants you to remain joyful and happy. God wants you to rejoice over and over and over and over again. That is, that is the joy that was given to us. Bible says joy was given to us. Romans chapter 15 verse 13 says, May the God of hope fill you with all joy and peace in believing. And we can read it together. Let's go. One, two, three. May the God of hope fill you with all joy and peace in believing so that by the power of the Holy Spirit, you may abound in hope. Wow. You are abounding more. There's more, more. Acts chapter 13 verse 52 says, and the disciples were filled with the joy and with the Holy Spirit. They were filled with the joy and the Holy Spirit. As you go home, I think this is what God wants you to have this morning is go joyful. Amen. When you come back, come joyful. When you start your job, be joyful. Right? When you start your family, be joyful. Whatever situation that is going around, as I mentioned, that we are not looking around to live our life. We are looking unto God, looking within, because God is our source. He gives us joy and hope all time. So many will choose this morning to be joyful. Amen. How many want to see our church as a joy-filled church? Praise God, right? When people come in, they will feel God. There's so much joy. Not judging anybody. Amen? We need the mercy of God. With that, can you all stand up on this morning? You may be saying, life is not fair, Pastor. You preached good. But I tell you, your problem and the answer for your problem lies in the hands of God. If you just surround Surrender yourself. The Lord will take away whatever is holding you back. Not to enjoy this life. Can you say to the Lord, Lord, I'm ready. Fill me with joy today. Send me with overflowing joy and smile on my face. Smile and joy around me, around my family, Lord. Spirit of the living God. Fall afresh on my people this morning. You are not only filling us with power to live, but you are filling our minds with the joy so that we can enjoy this life. This morning, Father, that is what I pray. Give them overdose. Amen. Hallelujah. Give everyone overdose of joy. <laughs> Let them be joyful. The times of mourning be over. Sorrow be over. Ashes be over, disease be over, sickness be over, crisis in life shall come to an end in Jesus' name. As your servant, I speak joy, I speak gladness, I speak hope over your people, O oh God. Bless us as we go from this place. Continues to watch over us, lead us and guide us. Now, children of the Most High God, I come into the hand of our Father. May the Lord be with you. May the Lord cause his face to shine upon you. May the Lord be gracious unto you. Now may the grace of the Lord Jesus Christ and the love of God and the fellowship of the Holy Spirit rest and abide in us now and forevermore. Amen. Amen. Give the Lord a shout of praise and have a great Sunday, guys. <laughs>